And we're gonna talk about five tips for generating and converting seller leads by creating seller squeeze pages, posting seller squeeze pages, checking on campaigns, valuations, and search alerts, creating RPR reports, and mailing RPR property flyers. Now, so I would like to see in the, in the chat, if you already know all about uh, creating seller squeeze pages and you're a pro at that, um, I would like you to put a one in the chat. And if you don't know much about creating seller squeeze pages and you really wouldn't know what to do, I want you to put a two in the chat. So one means I totally know how to do it, and two means don't have a clue how to do create a seller squeeze page. Wow, a decent amount of twos, actually. Hmm, okay. 1.5, I like that. <laughs> so <laughs> let's start here with squeeze pages and creating seller squeeze pages. I've switched to the new KV Core and it looks something like this, and I'm sure it will evolve over time but we're gonna create some squeeze pages. Now, before I go on to just mention something, um, some of you might say, hey, is there a landing page on my website for sellers to put it, you know, ask for their instant home value? Yes. So if you're using KV Core, you have this sell link right here. This is your seller landing page. You could share this link right here. It's gonna be your domain dot com forward slash sell dot php and you could post that link to your little heart's content in a variety of digital platforms you know facebook um, google twitter linkedin youtube wherever your heart desires however it's not a squeeze page so this is a link and somebody could go ahead and enter their address and get their estimate if they wanted to, but it's not a squeeze page. So some of you who have been following me and have been part of this training or have been a part of previous trainings, what, what can a squeeze page do for us? And how is that gonna be different than just sharing this regular link? Who wants to tell me? Is it that the squeeze page captures their information? Close, yes it does, but so would this. Where? Right here, they'd enter their address and then click get estimate and they'd have to provide their information in order to see that estimate. Oh. So how would this be, how would this be different than a squeeze page? Does, who else knows? Who, but that was it, puts it, it puts them in a campaign. So they get put into one of the campaigns. So we start sending them emails and phone, phone messages. Yes, but but if you've done what we did in the very first session where you added a seller campaign to KB Core and it's activated, anybody who it puts in their instant home value and provides their email address is going to get that campaign. Squeeze page and this, this landing page, they're both going to capture the information and they both will start a campaign. Who else? Does it give you a link to promote very specifically finding your home's value? We're, we're getting closer. Yes. Yeah. So one thing is we can, um, we can be more specific about the area. Okay. So we can, we can be specific about areas like zip codes, cities, and counties. Okay. So that's one thing we can do with a squeeze page. This, this link, this link here, I could share just as well as any squeeze page link. But, but besides what I think Laura, I'm not sure who said, who said about we can create a squeeze page to, to focus on a specific area, what else can a squeeze page do? And Courtney was kind of on the right track when she was talking about campaigns, but we're almost there. I just want to... It narrows it down to a whole set of parameters of house type, um, area, price range, everything. It basically creates a set of parameters that you can use to you're so set it up. You're so close. You can list um, just listed or open houses or just reduced. So, so you guys are close. Both of you are close. You're talking about parameters. But what oh. you're talking about right now, instead of seller squeeze pages, now I hear you talking about multi-property squeeze pages. Right now, you guys are both talking about you know, listing type or price ranges or open houses. Those are, those are multi-property squeeze pages. Those are lists of properties, lists of property mm -hmm. types. I'm talking about just a page that says get your instant home value. 
So whether it's a squeeze page that promotes a list of properties or a single property, okay. there's all, and, or a market report, there's also this seller squeeze page we can create. If I go and post just this link, just every, anywhere, if I post this on Facebook right now, someone might enter their address and get the estimate and then I'll have that lead. And if they provide their email address and or their phone number, they're gonna start getting the seller campaign. The regular default seller campaign, that's what they're gonna get. So that's great. But what I can do with the squeeze page is two things. Number one, I can identify the specific area, like a specific county or city or zip code that I'm kind of like attracting people to. Um, and if the squeeze page, I can put in directions in the squeeze page about what I want KV Core to do with that lead. Okay, do I want KB Core to assign it a hashtag so that I can keep track of where I'm getting these leads? Do I want KB Core to use that hashtag to trigger a custom campaign? Okay, this is just like the little intro to that. And I'm glad that you're all here asking because this is stuff people get stuck on. And it's so simple though, and I wanna help you get unstuck. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's talk a little bit more about this page. If I go in here and I enter my address, okay, and I click on get estimate. Now you'll see here, I am logged in. It says Sylvia right here, up here on the top. This means I'm logged in as a consumer on my own website. So I've checked out my own website before I've logged in and I looked at properties on my own website and I'm registered on my website as a consumer. So I'm, all, I'm logged in. So if I click on get estimate here, it will show me an estimate. Um, because I'm already logged in, it's not gonna require registration. But if I was not registered, it would. So just know that. Like I could log out completely out of my website. Now it tells me my CMA's report is generated and I can either download it I can have it emailed to me or I can view my comparable. So that's what it's gonna offer me. So there it is, there's my download. There's my little analysis and it's giving me like a little CMA almost. It's kind of cool actually. Or I can have it emailed to me. So now it just got emailed to me. Or I can click on view comps, okay? So, so those, that's what's gonna happen when somebody actually submits their Registration. Now, if somebody puts in their address and they decide not to provide their email address or their phone number, because um, they, they, they realize when, you know, let's say they're not logged in. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually log out so you can see the difference. I'm just going to totally log out here. So I logged out. You'll notice it says log in here. So I'm not logged in here. I'm going to do this again. And if I click get estimate, notice now it's asking me to enter my info to get the value. I can either put in my email address and continue with email, or I can log in with Facebook or my Google account. If I decided, if I'm like, eh, I don't feel like doing that, I don't need it that bad, I'll just see what Zillow says. Guess what? You still get a lead, you get a partial lead. You get the address, okay? And that matters. To me, this house right here, um, I just closed on on April 1st and it was a lead just like that. It was a lead that somebody had just put in their address and they um, clicked get estimate. They did not want to put in their email or their phone number, but I got an address and that is still a great lead. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. Does it take a little extra effort? Absolutely. <laughs> but guess what? I didn't have to pay any other agent for a referral fee for this. <laughs> it was my listing. And I didn't have to pay any referral fee on it. And it was worth the time that it took to, to convert it. I was wondering was the accuracy of that CMA. Don't worry about it. Honestly, like, <clears throat> let's look at something. When I do my CMAs, when I'm not getting ready to go to a house, uh, to, to talk about 
you know, where we're going to price somebody's house. You know, where are these people already looking at the value? Where are they looking, these homeowners? They're looking at the different home values online, right? So what I, and I learned this in the pricing strategy advisor, which is in our class, by the way, in our certification, I put, I look up the home and I find all the different AVMs, the, these automated home values and what they, how they range, you know, so I list them, you know, so there's realtors, property resources, this homes.com, realtor.com says this, Redfin says that, Movoto says that, that's different. Um, Zillow says that, Trulius says that, Realty Track says that, and then if I do a, a CMA from the MLS, I'm getting about that, and then RPR with comps gives that. So it kind of gives like this weird, I mean, they're all very different. And honestly, think about it in your market, you guys, and what's happening right now in real estate. Who decides what a home is worth? The market does at that moment. So my point is, it's really just to get the conversation started. So I don't want you to worry too much about the accuracy because either it's going to be pretty close or it's going to be way low or way high. Who cares? Honestly, I don't want you to worry about it because you're not, you're not going to use that as the price when you go to list their house. You're going to use it to get the conversation started. If they reply back and say, wow, I had no idea my home could be that much worth that much. Well, great. It could be worth that much. It could be lower. It could be higher depending on the actual condition of your home and in recent sold. So that's where I come in, you know, um, or if they say, oh my gosh, no, you have it all wrong. My home's got to be worth way more. And also you only listed two bedrooms and I have three bedrooms. And I say, hey, you know, I'm only as good as the county data is. So if the county records don't show that third bedroom, it's not going to show up. But that's where I come in. I can actually come and do a professional home value. Let me ask you some questions about your home and do a real comp you know, a real analysis for you. So you're getting the conversation started, right? So hopefully you're over that hump. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then was there other things? Um, yes, I can share that spreadsheet. When I first started using KB Core in spring of 2018, I didn't know what I was doing. When I posted a, a squeeze page, a seller squeeze page. And um, I don't know if you guys have been around long enough to remember Jonathan Dupree, who was with us for a short time in the left, but he was pretty cool. And he gave us a little tip about using the Nextdoor app. You guys familiar with Nextdoor? I'm just going to show it. And I don't know if it's in Canada or not. Nextdoor is like a neighborhood app. You can just be a neighbor on it. And it's like a news feed of like who lost their cat in the neighborhood, you know, who's having a garage sale in the neighborhood. Um, who's got some free perennials to pick up because nobody wants them there, whatever the case may be. Or if you want to find any services like carpentry or um, mm -hmm. gutter cleaners or power washing, those little things. Yes, absolutely. So great um, referrals in there. And so you as a realtor, you, you know, if you want, if you join your next door app, you join your neighborhood, um, you can find those and say, hey, I know a great electrician, blah, 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 because maybe you've met some people. So you're kind of getting to know your neighbors that way and they're seeing you and you can put in your profile that you're a realtor. And then you can also claim a free business page. If you want to post on your free business page, post ads on it, then you have to purchase a zip code. Okay. And your zip code in your area might be too expensive to do. Mine was super cheap. So I did it. But you can also post as a neighbor. I'm not going to get too far into it, but I am going to point you to a video because this is a good follow-up to watch later. I'm going to put this in the chat. Um, I go into detail about posting on Nextdoor in this training video, and I also go into detail about using the process I'm about to teach you right now. Um, but since th this time, I did this March 25th of 2019, I've evolved. It's evolved. So you're getting the evolved version right now, but this is the old version that's still really good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, oh, great. Suzanne said she created a group called Real Estate Updates on her next door neighborhood. Great idea. The point is I did exactly what I showed you I do in this video. Um, and I got 150 leads, seller leads. And they were a mixture of people that just had addresses people that just had phone numbers and people that um, just had email addresses or a mixture of all, you know, so I had a variety. When it came down to it, I had 
98 good leads when I was going through them these 98 good leads some were duplicates initially I got like a hundred good leads and then um and then I kind of did it a few times after that and I got some more and I got 155 from next door and you know I have converted listings from this people will call me up and say hey i'm ready to list my house now <laughs> and these are people that i have been sitting in my kv core for a year or two years or three years that i got from this initial effort that think i'm their realtor because they hear from me now which is fun now i want to show you some more examples of these leads so you might get a lead that looks like this 929 charlene drive and that's all we know. I don't have an email. I don't have a phone number. Why? Because when they went to go put in their address and they realized, oh, I got to put in my phone number and my email. I don't feel like it. I'll just go look at Zillow. You know, I didn't really mean to click that anyway. I don't feel like it. You know, we've all been there, right? Um, but I still got the partial lead. I got the address. And that is still a good lead. That's somebody who could possibly be interested in something. And maybe if not right now, someday. So that's that. So I'm gonna go into like how we're gonna work with these leads momentarily. Let's do some other ones. I'm gonna show you some, some other ones. So I've got this hashtag Google seller because I have some Google ads running. And I can tell that they're Google ads because I have a hashtag assigned because of the squeeze page. And so I can see what's going on there.